my savior he set me free now this while i tell you what it means to me let us pray dear heavenly father as i stand here today i pray that your presence fills this place as we gather to talk about jesus thank you for the opportunity to share your love and learn from your teachings Thanks to God, most importantly. Yeah, my name is Oseni Daniel, and uh, I'm Chef Daniel by Nomenclature, professionally Chef Daniel. Yeah, basically, I'm the founder and CEO of Chef Daniel Food Limited, and also the CEO and managing director of uh, Maos Waste Management, um, operational manager at Fukuzi Art, uh, the CEO of Events by Dan, and um, the founder and um, creative director of Dan Culture. Yeah, all these has actually been by the help of God, not me, actually. Yeah, but one big thing I would love to say is that um, from the scriptures in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, the scripture makes us understand that the Lord giveth understanding, he giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. One thing about life is starting anything, trying to move up, um, move up in our career journey, trying to get one or two things done. We must always acknowledge the fact that everything we have comes from God. That the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the talent, the gift, everything comes from God. Yeah, basically I started my, um, when I say entrepreneurship journey, as far back as um, when I was in GSS2. And how did it start? It started by just making photocopies for my colleagues. Then in class, I remember that was, um, data processing textbook it was not in it was not in the market at that day and um our data processing t-shirt computer t-shirt then it was like we have to make this photocopy this textbook that is what our syllabus was covered and i was like this is an opportunity for me to actually try and make something out of out of it although i wasn't thinking of um something big coming out of it but i collected the textbook i decided to make the photocopy for all my colleagues and from there that was when i when i made my first ten thousand era vividly and i was like wow this is something interesting that i can actually go i feel that i'm getting I, I, i'm getting something extra uh than just the academics prior to this time i'm um, actually i've been into music um, um by god's grace i've been in the children choir um, then from there to the youth choir, to the campus choir. Uh, I really thank God for that, though. So music has also all, also been something of interest. I think I got that from my mom. That's always something I love doing, even in the dream. <laughs> yeah. So um, apart from music, I was like, what other thing can I do? Um, and I was like, this is actually bringing out something in me. And when I got to GSS3, I started learning how to make pastries, cakes, and confectionaries, basically snacks, the confectionary, pop, donuts, cakes, small shops, and all. As that when I got to SS1, I started making cakes for my colleagues. I think then uh, we make, uh, at times some of them might have birthday, and uh, we, uh, I would try to put one or two things together, make those cake for them. Even though the cakes were not fluffy then, I remember one time I made a cake like that and my colleagues called it Amala cake because it was literally like Amala. Yeah, and that is um, yam flour in English. Yeah, basically I continued the journey. It, it was a whole lot trying to um, put effort into this, trying to bring out that God-given talent, trying to discover myself along the line. I actually got a lot of comments, I got a lot of yabbings, I got a lot of, I would say, I got a lot of eatings, uh, let me use that word. Uh, my teacher, some of my teachers hated me in school then. I don't know, probably maybe it was as a, as a result of jealousy. I can't really say because there were a lot of things I could do. I was good in music, I was good in business, I was good in extracurricular activities, I was good in relating with people, I was good at talking to people and a whole lot like that. So uh, all of a sudden, that hatred just came from nowhere. I would say from my GSS1 to SS3 in secondary school, I, I literally wouldn't call it persecution, but I faced hell. Uh, but one thing I thank God for was that I never thought of suicide, and I never thought of giving up. But one thing that always encouraged me was that even though the sorrow might last for the night, the joy will definitely come in the morning. 
the business, um, the entrepreneurship career, the business career, uh, entrepreneurship journey started. I continued till I got to SS3. As at SS3, I had developed a lot. I knew that I was good in event planning, uh, event decoration, event styling and management. I was also, I also had interest in colors. I could combine a lot of colors together. I was thinking of how to bring something nice out of colors. I discovered that I also have a flair and I have good flair for food. Anything that comes to food, I'm a good, uh, what I say, I'm a foodie. I love things that uh, deals with food and all. And um, I also discovered that I, I, I had a spike and interest for art. I loved inventions, I loved creating things, and um, not only that, I also love waste management. I love recycling, I love putting things together, I love turning waste to wealth. Yeah, that's the word. But um, I would say there was no much opportunity, but I remember I told my parents then that um, going to university was not going to be the thing for me. I literally am finishing secondary school to start a business. But you know a typical African parent. No, you have to go to school, you have to do this, you have to do that. How are you going to make it? What are you going to, how are you going to show forth your certificate and all? With God's help, I got admission that year into the Federal University of Technology to study industrial chemistry. Studying industrial chemistry was a whole challenge because I was, at the point of my life, I was thinking of how am I going to get that career that is going to match all everything I do together and I came across material engineering. But you know, the ways of men are not the ways of God. I eventually got industrial chemistry. Getting industrial chemistry was a whole lot. Um, I continued my journey in 100 level when I, uh, when I started in Futa. And then I looked around because I'm critical thinking and I love observing everything around me. I looked around, what is that other thing that um, actually is uh, um, people don't know? or people would love to have, or people would love to get, or will be um, accommodated by, by everybody. And there, I'm going to come to the um, Bible verse that says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do the commandments of God is praise and just forever. In everything you do, I, that was what I started with, always have the consciousness of God. God factor is number one. One thing I've learned to do is every step I take, I involve God. Every step I take, I involve the Holy Spirit. Decisions of life, the way, should I do this? Should I not do this? How, 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 how will this eventually turn out to be? God, what is the next step? What is the next thing for me? And eventually, lo and behold, the inspiration came. The inspiration of making chocolate pop. I know many of us might not have heard of chocolate pop, but chocolate pop pop, yes. You know, for pop that is chocolate is <laughs> uh, is actually oh lot um, that's um, breeding. Uh, will I say Italian recipes now with African recipes, which, which is our normal for pop. Then I started that in school. I started studying in school at that hundred level, but in my second semester because I felt I wanted to be um, self-dependent. I wanted to start doing things myself and all. Lo and behold, my parents got to know that I was selling chocolate pop in school and. My, I remember vividly that, that evening, my father challenged me, and he was like, Daniel, what is that thing that you're selling in school? But as far, you know, I never told them that I was going to start something like that. I wanted to kind of keep it secluded or secret from them. And I was like, what am I doing? What is that thing? That, have you seen me selling anything? You sent me to school to go and read. So why will I bother disturbing myself about any other thing? But me and Bio, they told me that where is the chocolate pop pop that so so and so person bought, bought, bought for me? I had to go back to the hostel. I had to go and bring the pop home that same evening. And as I was about to, he, 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 my parents, my dad and my mom, as I then they told me, they said, OK, bring it, let us taste it. How, we, how is it like? I was like, ah, for you to taste it, you have to pay for it because it's a service. I'm rendering a service. I'm, I, I, I actually use the money to get this. And then my dad, he paid for it, I gave it to him, and he had a taste of it, and he was like, wow, this is nice, this is this, this is this, this is that. When did you get this? How did you develop this at all? They were so engrossed in, when I say the creation of the recipe of the product then. But, normal African parents, after everything, they were like, hey, you know, we sent you to school to go and read, you must learn how to balance up and all, and like, 
But now and behold, that was how I got my freedom into doing business. Because right from time, it was always book, book. My, my father is a professor, my mom is a doctor. So you should know what that is. You have to buckle up to become an emeritus. <laughs> but that's along the way, actually. So um, that was how I got my that was how I got my breakthrough into um, starting up um, Chocolate Paul. As at then on the level, I was already into events. I was already into fashion. I was uh, already into planning, and oh, I was also into colors. I had to balance between my academics, spirituality, that the spiritual life. I had to balance my business, um, the business um, life as well, and also extracurricular, um, would I say life or activities now, because I was involved in a whole lot of extracurricular activities. I mean, I volunteered a lot for different organizations. I joined a lot of organizations. There's hardly any events that comes, that happens in the school that goes past me without me volunteering for those events, because I actually have this fear. Of, I didn't know. This this, uh, this love of uh, of giving back to my community. I love impacting the lives of people. I love I love touching the lives of people out there, from an cause to art prize to impact your words to um, Red Cross to Pioneer Medical Initiative to a whole lot of organizations that I really can't me can't finish mentioning. Um, or, although all this, all thanks to God, because all this was not just by me. It was by God because. The fear of God is the beginning of all wisdom. And that's what I would love you to know. It is when you have the fear of God, when you have the consciousness of Christ in you, that is when you have the insight. That is when Christ shines the light. He shows you the path. He shows you the right way to go. He shows you the right thing to do. At first, I told you the other time that um, I wanted to study engineering and I found myself in industrial chemistry. I can mostly say that today, that that is the purpose of God for my life. Because I look at everything I'm doing, the chemistry, the industrial chemistry covers it all for me. Yes, also now that I, 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 I to my final year, 500 level, my goals because I'm now done. I'm just waiting for you know the old uh, university ceremony and all. And um, I look back and, it, and I, 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 I thank God for His faithfulness because it's not just me, but it has just been God all the way. Because the old journey, if I say it was me, no. There was time of frustration, there would be time of, uh, I want to say depression, but there would be time of discouragement, there would be time of like giving up, there would be time of, uh, I can't just continue, it's only me, I've been trying this, I've been doing this, it's not forthcoming as though as I wanted, but all thanks to God. So yes, to now I really can say it's been a whole lot in the event industry, I'm an event decorator, I'm an event planner, I'm an event stylist, I'm also a table I'm stylist. I set tables and all for events. I'm also a color consultant. I I I I I I I, I serve as consultant to graphic designers, UI UX designers, and not only that. Also in the fashion industry, I do a lot when it comes to African attires, English attires, casual wears, hoodies, and all. And uh, basically now to food, which is actually my basic uh, my 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 love and uh, also not only that i'm also into waste management and also into uh, uh preservation and storage of agricultural produce that um uh i would say tomatoes basically and food generally because the love for food has actually opened me to a lot of business lines product lines when it comes to um, agricultural produce and all. And basically, I would love to say it's, it's just been called all the way, not just me. And um, yeah, I might today, I can, uh, uh, I, 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 I am the full founder of um, um, Chocolate Pop, Chef Dan. Is subsidiary uh, um, Chef Dan uh, Chocolate Puff is subsidiary of Chef Dan. Yeah, so that's the product I talked about Chocolate Puff at first. So God really helped us all the way, and I was able to actually launch the product fully this year. Um, that was um, this year, um, February. Yes, February this year. And as I speak to you, Chocolate Puff is almost everywhere. I wouldn't say everywhere around the country, but it's literally something that is consumed in Lagos, Abuja, Accra, and all. Ah, but one big thing I would love to say is that at this point, looking back to how I started, looking back to the journey, looking back to what transpired along the line, I would love to tell you that one thing is important, God. Another thing is resilience. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on that God-given talent, God-given gift, on that God-inspired instinct in you. 
don't give up on those things because I tell you, those are things that, that will definitely make way for you. Because the scriptures has made us to understand that the gift of a man will definitely make way for him. And I can tell you today, by, by the grace of God, my gift is actually making way for me. And one big thing I want, to, I want you to ask yourself, what is your gift? How can you start? What are the things you need to start? What are the necessary things you have to involve? What are the necessary things, process you have to put in place to ensure that this thing goes well? And today, one thing I can always say is going back to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 23, to you, O God, my Father, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me the wisdom and the power even now you have made known to me what I request of you and um, have made known to me the king matters. So that's one thing I, 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 I would love to say because that's uh, uh, everything I can say today, everything I can talk about in the entrepreneurship journey is as a result of the God factor. So my dear youths, my dear teenagers, I want you to put this at the back of your mind, God and um, resilience. Thank you very much. Entrepreneurship and handicraft. My talent is based around handmade craft and clay sculpting. I like to experiment with different materials, being able to make unique products beneficial to others. Crafting has become a daily hobby of mine. I have improved my skills, which have allowed me to create more intricate designs. Here are some examples of my projects I've been working on over the past few months. The target audience are students of all ages. The humidifier chair has a built-in water filter and humidifier. Low humidity can cause a variety of health problems such as itchy eyes, dry skin, etc. The humidifier adds moisture to the air, helping improve the air quality indoors. This improves symptoms such as the dry sinus, therefore by reducing stress and helps dry eyes. The Bird Box project was inspired by art movement New Expressionism. It consists of different creative abstract designs and unique styles and techniques.
within three weeks of intensive training. Because of my passion and love for making bags, I went ahead to improve myself and I've been able to come up with these amazing samples. Some of these are macrame bags, tote bags, folder, messenger bags, and may sometimes include flower base, table clothing, footwear, and many others. These take an estimated duration of three to five days, depending on your choice. In December 2019, myself and my fellow colleagues, Shalom and Precious, emerged first position at the National Talent Hunt competition. This gave us the rare opportunity to meet with Pastor Dr. W. February 2020, who admonished and prayed for us. If you're interested in learning bag making or any other relevant skill, the Deeper Life Entrepreneurship School program is one you mustn't miss. Special thanks to the Deeper Life Entrepreneurship School organizers for putting this together and empowering me with this unique skill. Thank you.
Jesus. Praise the Lord. Stars. Ah, I'm not hearing you. Stars. Amen. Standing tall as rising stars. When I say stars, you tell me the full meaning of it. When I say the full meaning of it, you say stars. Now, choir from nations.
et tu nous demandes de faire pareil. Nous nous levons à chanter, nous nous levons à crier, puis nous te Like the sun so readily sending light for all to see, let your holy church arise, exploding into light, like the supernova light, let your holy church on fire, we will shine. Choir from the Alpha location. 
Thank you.
across our physical, spiritual, and moral lives, I choose to stand. Even as Joseph stood and advanced and fight hard, but who stands not to lose, but who stands not to fall in his shoes, push the side what is present. For I am fortunate for it sharpens my attention. You can do better. Everybody praise the Lord. I want a louder one. 
We are aiming for miracles. We are aiming for blessings tonight. Praise the Lord. Okay, now we want to have the children's section, the youth section responding, and thereafter, all of us together. Can we have, let's start with the children. Children, children, children. Children, children, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right now, youths, are you there? Youths, are you there? Praise the Lord. Together, everybody, youths, children, fathers, mothers, praise the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a wonderful moment, a great time to meet our great God and to receive the word of God that will bless the soul of everyone. You are welcome in Jesus' name. We welcome everyone, all our dignitaries here, our special invitees, children, youth, adults, everybody here. You are welcome in Jesus' name. The Lord has prepared great, great packages for us in this global children and youth convocation. Get ready for the great blessing, the great outpouring of the great blessing of God from heaven. The Lord has prepared great, wonderful packages of blessings for every one of us. And you will receive in Jesus' name. Say, I will receive in Jesus' name. I will receive my blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. As we are all aware, this is a four-day program, four-day event, starting from today, running through to Sunday. And tomorrow again, we are here from 3 p.m. with the children and youth separate session, and then combined together. Tonight, as we are rounding up this program, we have the opportunity of receiving the word of the Lord from the servant of the Lord, the convener of this global children and youth convocation. The Lord has been using him in various places. Our father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. The Lord will use him again to night for us. Somebody there, praise the Lord. Activation. The Lord by spirit, by his power, will activate everything you need to get you to the sky. We used to say the sky is the limit now. The sky is your starting point. I wanted to hear a global amen. Raise up that hand. Father, in Jesus' name, we're asking, Lord, that today you will take everyone, every sister, every brother, every boy, every girl, every young adult, man or woman, and I pray every scene that tied us down in the past, break, Cut everything away in Jesus' name. Release everyone to dream bigger, to go higher, and to achieve greater in Jesus' name. Confirm your power, your miracle, 
Your signs and wonders, success in everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to shout another amen before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down. What we are talking about today, knowing Jesus and experiencing him in life. Knowing him, who he is. Knowing him, what he can do. Knowing him, what he has decided to accomplish in your life. And experiencing him. You know, there are things we know, but we don't experience. I know that 3 plus 4 is 7, but there's no way I can taste that. I can feel that. I can experience that. There are many things we know that we cannot experience. But when we know him, our Savior, when we know him, our Redeemer, when we know him, the lifter up of our head, we know him and we experience him in life in the morning is there with us afternoon is there with us evening is there with us knowing jesus and experiencing him in life i'm looking at matthew chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 15 matthew chapter 16 verse 15 is said unto them but whom say ye that I am? He's saying, I know you've been following me. I know you will be in the boat together. I know that you'll see me heal the sea. You've seen me raising up light, changing lives, transforming lives. But now, I want to know, have you experienced me? Whom say ye that I am? In verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. I feel that. I sense that. I've tasted that. And I've known how you have solved the problems of my life. What I know, that I know in my heart, in my soul, in my mind. I know that I know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's the experience. It's not the knowledge of the head. It's not the knowledge, you know, I studied Christian religion. I got it. Not that one. This is the one that gives you experience. That is Christ in your life. That he is your redeemer. He is your savior. You wake up in the morning and you feel Christ is there. And you're going in the way, you know Christ is there. And anywhere you are, you come into a crossroad. You say, thou art the Christ. The one that says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You have experienced him knowing Jesus and experiencing him in life. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Look at verse 17. It says there, and Jesus answered and said unto him, The search art thou. When you know him, he tells you, Blessed art thou. When you call him by his name, he says, Blessed art thou. You wake up in the morning, or you are going in the way, or you are taking an exam. Anywhere you are, you just sense it's with me here. And when you sense that, and you say that, he says, Blessed art thou. Simon, he even mentions your name. By Jonah, the son of Jonah, he even knows your parents. He says, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. But my father, but my father, you're even in relationship with the father. You're a child of God, a child of the father. And he said, this experience you've got from me, 
you have received that. You have received the affirmation, the confirmation. And you have received the operation and the revelation from my Father who is in heaven. And I pray that today you've known Christ, you will know him more. Amen. And as you experience him more in your life, you know, a great journey ahead of you and a great pathway ahead of you. He will support you. He will lead you. He will lift you up. And he will put something in your life that will always activate the dream. And you will know that's where I am going. And because Jesus Christ is always there, if there's any hurdle, if there's any difficulty, if there's any challenge, you say, Lord Jesus Clear the way for me, your way, your way will be clear every time. My way will be clear every time. My way will be clear every time. And the Lord will see you through to the top in Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about one, two, three. It's like a ladder. And I say one, you go up. I say two, you go up again. I say three, confirmation in your life. Number one. We're looking at number one. Very simple. Who is Jesus to you? We're seeing who Jesus is or was to Peter, to John, to Matthew, to Luke, to Paul. Who is Jesus? Jesus to you. Number two, what says Jesus to you? Very simple. Who is he to me? What does he say to me? Number three, works of Jesus through you. Works of Jesus through you. It's going to work in you. Is going to work for you. And it's going to work through you. Your life will take a new sparkling. Your life will shine. Your life, something in a heavenly hand will be lifting you up, lifting you up. You'll get, you know, some special students. They get double promotion. There was, uh, you know, one student, girl, when I was a teacher in a high school, she got triple promotion. And you are ready for promotion. I am ready for promotion. It will promote you. It will take you from where you are now to where you ought to be. And number one, number one is who is Jesus to you? Not to them, not to the pastor. I know who he is to me, but yourself. And you have to decide, this is who Jesus is to me. Look at it, number one, who is Jesus to you? The Son of God. The Son of God. I need to explain that to you. The Son of God became the Son of Man that he may take the sons of men to become the sons of God. Have you seen that graph? The graph that goes from up that point there and then goes down and then curves and goes up again and comes to that level. The Son of God became the Son of Man, that he may take the sons of men to become the sons of God. That's exactly what Peter said. Look at Matthew there again. In Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, it says, Thou art the Son of 
of God. He is the Son of God. And when you experience Him, you experience Him, the Son of God, and He knows how He feels. He knows what it takes to be a Son of God. And as many as receive Him, to them He gave power. He gave the privilege. He gave the authority to become the sons of God. Even the people that believe in his name, and as you believe in his name today, it will transform your life. He'll take you from among men, and then he'll lift you up, and you'll become a child of God, son of God, daughter of God. Number two, who is Jesus? Is the savior of the guilty. Is the savior of the guilty. When we are drowning in guilt and swimming in guilt and perishing in guilt, he searches us out. He sees you there where you are today. He sees you there where you are today. He has located you. Say, I am located. Now, why has he located you? He wants you to be saved from every form of guilt because he is the savior of the guilty. Look at uh, Acts chapter 5, uh, and I'm reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 5, verse 30, that God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Look at verse 31, and it says him, as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. The Lord God of heaven lifted him up. He rose from the dead so that he will be a savior to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. If you have not got it yet, it's available for you today. He will forgive your sins. He'll take all the guilt away, and then he becomes the savior of the guilty. Number one, the son of God. Number two, the savior of the guilty. Number three is the source of all grace. The source of all grace. Let me explain. Grace is like water. What I mean is this. When you are born, you needed water. You drank water. As you became an infant, you, drink, you drank water. And then as you became a, a young fellow in your teens, water. You still take water. And after you've gone to college, in college, you take water. Outside the college, you take water. When you become a professional, you never grow out of I don't need water anymore. I'm now a professional. I'm now married. I'm now a father. I'm now a mother. I don't need the water anymore. I'm old now. I'm in my 70s. And I leave water drinking to young people younger than I know. In your 90s, you still need water. I said grace is like water. As you are starting the journey, the journey with Christ, that he is your savior, you need grace. As you become born again, and you face life, and you are going through life, you need grace. And as you become a professional, and you become a married man, a married woman, you become even a preacher, you become a pastor, you become a leader, you need grace. And in the old years of your life, when you are about to cross over to that uh, paradise and heaven, the grace that started is the grace that moves on. And that's why Paul the Apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. All grace. Grace for salvation. And grace for sustenance and grace for strength, and grace for steadiness, and grace for steadfastness, any area, any situation in your life, grace, and is the source 
of all grace. And look at John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 16. In John chapter 1, verse 16, of his fullness, like the fullness of the ocean, the fullness of the sea. It never runs dry. Before we were born, that ocean had been there filled with water. And after we have gone, that ocean will still be filled with water. The grace of God had been there before you were born. And before you were born again, and now that you are born again, the grace of God is still there. And the grace keeps on increasing. And the grace keeps on expanding. And it says, of his fullness, have we all received grace for grace. Grace upon grace. Grace after grace grace at all levels and as you come to a day the level of grace you need the supply of grace you need the lord will grant unto you your life will be gracious your life will be full of grace and every time any challenge every time in every situation in your life grace upon grace Grace upon grace. What's grace? G-R-A-C-E. God's redemption at Christ's expense. Redemption. That I don't have to work for that. I don't have to pay anything for that. God's redemption at Christ's expense. What's grace? God's riches at Christ's expense. I want to buy something. I don't have the money that covers the cost. And the Lord comes and he says, what do you want? Pick it, I've paid for it. Anything you want in life. The position you need in life. And the place you're dreaming, I want to get to. I don't have the resources. I don't have the riches. The Lord Jesus comes by your side. He said, where do you want to go? What level do you want to reach? Look at that. I paid for it. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. He that knew no sin was made a sin offering for you and for me that we might become the righteousness of God. God in him. Receive the grace. Are you there? Receive the grace. Nothing will be so difficult and impossible for you. Number four, who is Jesus to me? Who is Jesus to you? He is the sanctifier of the godly. The sanctifier of the godly. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear people and they say sanctification, I don't know how that will happen in my life. Maybe I struggle more. Maybe I supplicate more. Maybe I surrender more. Maybe I submit more. Maybe I strategize more. Maybe I study more. It's not about you sanctifying yourself. Who do you say Jesus is? And who is Jesus unto you? He is the savior of the sinner. He is also the sanctifier of the godly. Yes made you godly when you came to Christ. He took all your sins away, and now he wants to cleanse your heart. He wants to purify your heart. He wants to make you whiter than snow. It's not something you do for yourself. He is the sanctifier of the godly. He tells us in um, Hebrews chapter 13, Reading from verse 12. Hebrews 13 verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people. 
the people, Oluka, the people, his own people, the people who have appeared before him, and they were saved, and they were forgiven, and their names were written in the book of life. Those people, they now come to him, and Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, so far without the gate. In verse 13, it says, let us go forth therefore. The word therefore, it says, therefore, because of what he has done, because of what he has purchased, and because of what he provides, it says, let us, all we need to do is to want it, is to desire it, is to ask for it, is to come to him and to say, I know that you are the sanctifier of your people. Let us go for therefore unto him without the calm bearing his reproach in verse 14 for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come we're seeking that city to come and if we're going to enter that city there is just one condition, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're coming now to number five, who Jesus is to us, in the soccer, in the support in temptation. Support in temptation. I'm looking at um, First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 in first corinthians chapter 10 verse 13 there has no temptation taking you come to you that but such as is common to man i need to explain you know god is a wise god a wise father is a wise governor. He governs our lives. And let me go back.